from Hordak to Snorlax. Nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us on today's episode, we have Kelly Nugent. Oh my God, it's me. You went first with me. I'm <laughs> You're <scared>. first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we also have Erica Ishii. Hi, it's me. I'm back, baby. <laughs> and we have Malika Lim Eubank. Hello, I'm ready to um actually. Thank you all for coming on to play with me. Um, you've all played before, so you know what the deal is. Uh, but if you uh, are just watching now, you have no idea what's going on. This is a little game called Um Actually. I have a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about a bunch of nerdy shit. And it's up to these fine <laughs> folks to buzz in and tell me what I've said that is wrong and correct me. The only rule is you must proceed your corrections with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't, Jeopardy style can't give you that point. Uh, Kelly's already remembering moments of not saying yeah, I'm no. actually rock <laughs> living in rock <laughs> bottom worst moment this, of my life <laughs> it's it sucks because the the moment it happens most is when you're super excited you're like I know this one and you like jump right into it and you fly right yeah. past that I'm um, actually uh second you can interrupt me whenever you want as soon as you spot what's wrong you can just jump right in there buzz in get your place in line and get that first guess in buzzers at the ready and uh let's give it a go the 2016 movie Arrival, based on the short story, Story of Your Life, follows linguist Louise Banks and her attempts to communicate with aliens called Tralfamadorians, who do not perceive time in the linear way humans do. What's uh, Kelly's wrong buzzed with in. this statement? <laughs> uh, 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 um, actually, she's mm -hmm. not a linguist. Uh, she's, she's, she's a scientist. <laughs> uh, so, she is so a, confident. Uh, she is a linguist, and right now there's a bunch of linguists being like, "How dare you say I'm not a scientist?" Oh, shit. Right now, no. go, I'm sorry. No disrespect to the soft sciences. You, you're you're <laughs> doing un unbelievable work. We wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> uh, Erica has buzzed in, and um, Kelly has remembered actually, something. Actually, <laughs> Trollfam. Uh, I'm actually Trollfam and Dorans aren't. Those from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, <laughs> oh, poor Kelly. Uh, uh, you you found what's wrong. They're 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 not Shalfamadorians. They are from something else. Uh, it's killing Kelly right now. Just just because it's killing, I'm going to give you the point unless someone, perhaps Kelly, can tell me what Shalfamadorians are from or can tell me what just, the aliens okay. at arrival are. Can I can I go? Can I ask uh, or do I have to buzz? Uh, again? Malika did buzz in. I just want to make sure. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, Malika, I'm, Malika I'm so off. I was like, was it a twenty? 16 movie? I don't okay. think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelly, what do you got for okay. me? Okay, are Tralfamadorians, are those from Slaughterhouse Five? Yes, they are. They uh, oh, that is uh, the Kurt Vonnegut, uh, another another group of aliens that do not perceive time in a linear fashion. Just a different alien that does. Uh, in Arrival, God. they're called heptopods. Heptopods. Sorry, Eric. I'm gonna say Kelly scooped that one from for you just for being a little bit more more specific. I was too eager before, and then when you said Trophimadorians again, I was like, oh man, that was like what like teenage edge lord kelly was like reading <laughs> in, when i was like 17 because i was like you know stories don't always have to have a happy ending much like kurt vonnegut posits so <laughs> have you ever seen the the slaughterhouse five movie i have not seen the slaughterhouse five movie it is a lot it's a lot <laughs> it is very much of its time ah. I, I bet it probably is i mean the book is also of its time yeah. yes yeah. for sure well, that point will go to Kelly, and we'll move right along to our next statement here. The superheroes in the TV adaptation of The Boys are notoriously hard to kill, but we do still see a number of superhero deaths over the first two seasons. Translucent dies when an explosive detonates inside him, Popclaw dies from a forcible drug overdose, Black Noir dies after peanuts trigger his nut allergy, and Mesmer is beaten to death. Uh, Kelly's buzzed in. Um, actually, Mesmer is not beaten to death. He is, that is that is incorrect, God, that's not whatever. what we're looking for. Malika, have you- uh... Uh, I'm going to give it a shot as somebody who actually did watch the series and don't Great. remember anybody who dies, because I, you know, you see it coming and you don't want to get attached. Yeah. However, we did have a character who should have died because he chose to take drugs. And I'm like, I think that's the thing that sticks out to me. So um, mm. actually, I don't think that character died 
because they had drugs forced down their throat. But it sounds like something that would fit with the show. That's not what we're looking for. It's basically like a murder that's passed off as a like drug mm-hmm. overdose where. Uh, like, um, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. we gotta get more specific, my nerd friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Erica, you buzzed in. Um, actually, it's not peanuts. It's pistachios. You're actually correct. <laughs> uh, uh, what? It, it's not. It's not peanuts. It's also not pistachios. So I'll give you the point unless uh, someone can tell me it is. There is an allergic reaction. It isn't Cashews. peanuts. The, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> well, well, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? I let someone else scoop it from you last time. And you did say it in your long string there. Uh, it's actually an <laughs> almond allergy. Oh, oh, brutal. They're in everything. They're in Their everything. Their allergies are, are truly horrific. And in skincare. You gotta watch out. Oh. Watch those face scrubs. There's technically two things wrong with this. The character is uh, is... Uh, dies from an almond joy bar that's that's sort of like forced out his oh, throat. Oh yes, that's I remember uh, what it was. that. But they also were like beat up first and then forced. I remember this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. hate myself. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they like make hey. a bit of a big deal of the almond joys. So, like it yes. does come like a little bit of a callback. Yeah. The second thing that's maybe a little off about this is it's sort of unconfirmed whether or not he's actually dead. It's one of these yeah. sort of like he, you sort of leave and like you don't totally know for sure. So he may not even actually be dead. Uh, so I would have accepted either of those answers that it's almonds and maybe he's not dead it does raise an interesting thing too though i think of like uh, you never hear superheroes like having allergies but it seems like there's no reason why they shouldn't and like like almonds can be as much of a kryptonite as kryptonite can i would think yeah nobody's weaknesses are anything mundane but like we are very fragile as a species and like you know just Honestly, I don't know, not pooping at the right time has killed people. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, scary. Yeah. Right. Like, we do not have universal health care. Yeah. yeah. That is just as likely, if not more so, going to kill a superhero than, I don't know, like a planet being smashed on their head or something. That's why I like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because mm. you don't hear about superheroes having trouble getting credit. And I'm like, of course they have no credit yeah. history. You yeah. Know, that was so real for me and I loved it. That's a point for Erica. The Bachman Books is a collection of short Stephen King novels written under the pseudonym Richard Bachman. While the original printing contained all four books written under the Bachman name, subsequent editions no longer include Rage, a story that centers on a school shooting. Um, Malika. Um, actually, Richard Bachman is a character from Silicon Valley. <laughs> uh, that's not what we're looking for. Erica, do you want to take a swing? Wild swing um, here? Actually, uh, it's the Bachman Chronicles. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it, it is called the Bachman Books. Kelly's buzzed in. Um, actually, there were more than that, the number of books that you said. That is correct. There were yes! uh, more than four <gasps> Bachman books. Uh, any idea how many there are? Oh, I don't I'll know. Gi- Twelve. I'll give it to you no matter what. It's not 12. Uh, there are uh, seven books currently. Um, but okay. even at the time that they, that they printed it, there were more than four Bachman books. So it's like, here are the Bachman books, but they didn't include uh, at least Thinner and maybe one other one that was out at the time, which is weird to do. Like, uh, here's a compendium of this author's work that includes everything, but doesn't actually include everything. Was that like a revisionist this... history thing? Like, were they trying to pretend that he didn't write that one? Uh, I don't think so. I think um, I think it might have just been a more recent one. So I think they're just trying to double mm. dip on the sales to be like, here's the old stuff, but don't forget to buy the new book too, which we're not putting in the old one. You got to get right. the collector's edition and this one. Mm. It's so crazy to be such a prolific writer that you can have a pseudonym that has also published seven best-selling novels. If you were just one person who had seven best-selling novels, it'd be like, hey, good job. You're killing it out there. Seriously. And then to just create a whole fake person that's also killing it. It's like, damn, all right, fine. <laughs> Can I shout out my favorite, one of my favorites of his that I actually read yes. for the first time recently, which is The Girl yes, Who Loved Tom Gordon? That was actually the first book, Stephen King book that I read. It's so good. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not that scary. It, it's got like some like psychological yeah. stuff in it, but it's like a, a little more internal, I guess I would say. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Fair? And I just love stuff like, you know, she's like lost in the woods and she's nine. And and I love when, when he says like... um if she had just kept going like another hundred feet, she would have found town, but instead she decides to turn left and gets lost for another week. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I love stuff like that. He does that in a lot of his books where it's like, just so you know, it's almost like in Labyrinth where it's like, oh, if she'd gone that way, she would have gone right towards the castle. You know, it's like, it's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, just so you know, there would be no story if she'd done this one different choice. Everything would be beautiful. Instead, every, every, 
ounce of pain that's going to come for the next 700 pages is yes. all because of one seemingly uh, <sighs> it, it, meaningless choice that she makes right now. Um, here's our next statement. This comes to us from a fan. This is a, a one of our viewers submitted questions. Oh, so. nobody ever gets these. <laughs> nobody. It's the, the alternate the reactions are so great. The fans just want to punish us. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Well, here we go. This one comes to us from Xenocryptica. Xenocryptica, thank you for submitting this question. In Dragon Ball Super, Goku completes a ritual that allows him to ascend past Super Saiyan 3 to a new level called Super Saiyan God. This ritual involves having the four other Saiyans in the series, Gohan, Vegeta, Trunks, and Goten, concentrate their ki into Goku, enabling the new transformation and allowing him to fight against the God of Destruction. Uh, Erica's buzzed in. Erica, do you have an answer? Uh, well, I've only ever seen selections from it and read the manga, but... Is it, it, it's not called uh, Super Saiyan God, it's called Super Saiyan Level 2? Uh, no, that's not what we're looking for. Um, Malika. I'm gonna um actually that they don't destroy the God of Destruction. He kind of steps aside. Um, I, I, uh, it is phrased as he just fights the God of Destruction. I don't know if, uh, we don't oh, specify exactly well, what happens here. So I will say that I, the fight I'm going happens. for the moment when Beerus gets food from <laughs> Bulmon is like, you know what, maybe not. <laughs> oh shoot, I did see this. Oh, yes, I man. saw that movie, oh, but totally I'm like, he's talking about the season, and I'm like, yo, there's too many characters, there's too many episodes, I just imploded. Hey, I get it, I get it. Uh, Kelly, do you have an answer? Um, actually, uh, there's not four friends, there's three. Kelly, you've actually found what's wrong, which is oh my uh, God. our number of Saiyans here. There should actually be five, not three. So I'll give you the point unless someone can tell me who the fifth one is. Uh, Malika's buzzed in. Uh, Piccolo. I'm um, actually Piccolo. <laughs> uh, he's not Piccolo, no. No! I'll pass, I'll pass. All right. Uh, Kelly, you'll take that for at least I did being able to identify oh, the number is wrong. There is a fifth Saiyan, both required and present. It is, in fact, the unborn fetus Pan uh, held by v uh, Videl. I don't know enough about the series to tell you more information, uh, but that is, uh, that is what we're looking for there. Erica, true to your prediction, the fan submitted question, a little tricky. <laughs> Nobody. And I love that they'll have an unborn fetus be a Super Saiyan <laughs> rather than make a super saiyan woman like <laughs> honestly the woman in that the woman in dragon ball z get like so the short end of the sit of the stick like chi chi was awesome until she grew up and married goku who is a terrible father and a terrible husband and like <laughs> she was this badass until suddenly she had to become a wife and a mother man <sighs> I'm sorry, Erica. I, I I wish I could uh, I wish I could make it different, but I can't. Um, but uh, that point will go to Kelly, and we'll move on to our next uh, question, which is our first shiny question of the game. Shiny questions like shiny Pokemon, a little bit different, a little bit rarer, still worth the same amount. This is a game called Where Am I? I'm going to show you six maps and ask if you can identify where we are based only on the map. Let's take a look at that first map. What is this from? What property? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, oh, uh, 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 yeah, Erica and Kelly have both buzzed in. Erica is first. I'm going to say, uh, um, <laughs> Tales of Earthsea. Uh, is not Tales from Earth Sea. Uh, uh, Kelly. Okay, I'm only saying this because I read something on the map. Okay. Is this from F Flash Gordon? This is from Flash Gordon. Uh, and reading stuff from the map Ooh. is totally allowed. This is a, a map of Mongo uh, from Flash Gordon. Cave World, Flash Gordon's kingdom, dog. Right in the middle. Um, there you go. Let's take a look at our next map. What is this from? Okay. Oh, Atlantic uh, Malika. Ocean. Um, actually, I'm totally wrong, but it's from a comic book <gasps> in whoa, the whoa. Oh, uh, uh, Black Panther. <laughs> uh, it is from Black Panther, actually. This is a map of Wakanda. Uh, that's that's where we are here. Um, uh, so we'll give that one to Malika. What is this from? Oh, man. There's like certain parts of this that are ringing some kind of bell, but uh, then other parts that are not. Uh, Erica, you've buzzed in. Um, actually, this is Faerun. Uh, good guess, but no, no. Uh, Malika. 
Um, actually, I'm going for the big uh, attempt here. I was yeah. just going to say this is a D and D map. Uh, no, no, uh, that's not what we're looking for. Uh, Kelly, is this from Magic: The Gathering? This is from Magic: The Gathering. Yes, this is a map of Dominaria <gasps> from Magic: <gasps> The Gathering. <gasps> it says wizards on the bottom. Wizards on the bottom. That's yeah. Why. And I was like, is it a D and D map or is Magic: The Gathering? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at our next one. Uh, Erica's buzzed in. Um, actually, is this from Narnia? It is not Narnia, but but it is a good guess. Kelly. Is this from the Gormenghast novels? No, no. Malika, do you have a guess or, or you want to pass? Um, actually, a random guess just trying to run faster than my friends. Is this from the Redwall series? No, it's not. Uh, no, this is, um, this is a map of Fillory from the Magicians, the Magicians series. Uh, so yeah. a, a very Narnia type vibe, Erica, mm -hmm. but that's Seems not what we're looking Narnia. for. Some yeah. of the names are similar yeah. to yes, other Yes, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at our next map there. What is this from? Okay. Uh, Kelly is buzzed in. Um, actually, this is Skyrim. That is Skyrim. That's Skyrim. Come on, the second I saw White Run, I was like, boom, it's done. Boom, there it is. Uh, we got one more map here. What is this a map of? Let's take a look at our last map. Uh, Erica. Um, actually, that's Dune. That is from Dune. Yes, this is a map of Arrakis. Arrakis. That's all our maps there. Our final tally here. Uh, Kelly, you got three. Uh, Malika and Erica, you each got one. So Kelly, you'll take the point for this shiny Ooh. question. Malika with unlimited potential. Here's our next statement. Metroids are alien creatures who first appear in the 1986 game of the same name. Metroids co-evolved along with the X parasites on planet SR388 and are therefore one of the few things that can destroy the deadly parasites. Kelly has buzzed this in. This is before my time. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, they uh, are not, they don't destroy the parasites. Uh, they can, they can actually okay. destroy the parasites. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Erica. Um, actually, they first appeared in Super Metroid. Oh, good guess, uh, but that's not what we're looking for. Malika, do you want to take a, take a swing or, or do you want to pass? Um, actually, they showed up in Metroid Prime. <laughs> uh, no, that's not what we're looking for. The uh, Metroids were actually uh, bio biologically engineered weapons by a different alien species. So they didn't oh, co-evolve along with the ex-parasites. Oh, they were put in there mm, specifically to try to kill them. The scientists in Metroid are just the dumbest MFs <laughs> in the world. Like, they keep bringing back Ripley, but like he's never won. He's never won against <laughs> Samus. Yeah, you know, like a little less and less they, they can bring back every time. But like, <laughs> it's like it didn't work the first like, five times, but by God, next yes. time we're gonna do it. <laughs> well, we'll keep this moving uh, to our next uh, question, which is a comics-related question. Comics question. Perhaps one of the strangest characters to appear in comics is the elf with a gun, later named Melf, who is exactly what his name suggests, a short, pointy-eared elf with a revolver. First appearing in The Defenders number 25, the elf with a gun commits a series of disconnected, unexplained murders before being killed by the Defenders. Kelly and Erica both listen. Kelly first. Kelly. Okay. Um, actually, his name is not Melf, it is Gelf. It's funny you say that because I is... think they later introduce another elf with a gun who might be named Gelf. Uh, no! But that, but but no, this this elf with a gun is in fact at first he's nameless, and then in later issues he's sort of retconned to be named Melf. Uh, so that's not the uh, incorrect thing here, Erica. That was literally the exact same thing <laughs> that I was gonna guess. Why would no you way name this dude's named a Melf? Gun elf. <laughs> Mel, <laughs> uh, unless he's like a like a like a I, I don't know like, you know like a male elf or something. You know, like, like you want the portmanteau male. to work, you want it to be like why? Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> master elf or a or a, a monkey elf or something, something that would yeah. make sense to put those together. Malika, do you have a uh, you want to take a guess here or I'm gonna take a stab at here. Take this. a stab. Um, actually, the defenders have some forgiveness between this elf and his gun. And they don't, they don't kill him. You know what, Malika? You're close him. enough. I'm going to count it. Uh, uh, Finally! 
One point. It's, One it's point. not. It's not that they have like some sort of uh, sort of or agreement, but it is true that the defenders don't kill the elf with the gun. Ultimately, the elf with the gun is killed randomly when a truck hits him for no apparent reason. <laughs> uh, and in fact, the whole basically like what's happening is like there's this story going on. There's like this B story of like this elf with a gun just showing up randomly and shooting someone. It's like, oh, what the fuck? There's this elf with a gun and murder, 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 murder after murder from this elf with a gun, and eventually. He's just killed by a truck and the defenders that never have any idea that this elf with a gun has been doing anything or ever meet him. Oh, oh, oh he looks like a perv. Oh, yeah. This guy, you don't want to open the door and see the elf with a gun. This no. ain't a good, good thing to see. Oh, this is like a Santa Claus elf. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that point will go to Malika. And here is our next statement. The phrase Klatu Barada Nikto is first uttered in the 1951 film The Day the Earth Stood Still to prevent the robot Gort from destroying Earth. Ash Williams says the same phrase in Army of Darkness in order to safely remove the Necronomicon. Uh, Malika is buzzed in. Um, actually, he does say that, but more to <laughs> do stuff with the Necronomicon. I'm gonna need you to elaborate a little bit. Uh, <laughs> that, that's... I'm just trying to run faster than my friends. <laughs> there, was, there was more uh, gobbledygook, um, abracadabra language. <laughs> uh, that's not what we're looking for. You've kind of, you found uh, at least a way in of like, sort of like the area that's wrong. It's a little too incorrect for me to give you the point, but um, does anyone else want to take a stab? Uh, Kelly. Um, actually, he says that to try to destroy the Necronomicon? It's not what we're looking for, no, no. Darn. Darn. Erica, you wanna take a swing? Um, actually, uh, it was not in Army of Darkness. It was in the, uh, 1999's The Mummy. <laughs> no, no. Um, there's actually two things wrong with this, so I would have accepted either one of them. The biggest one is that Ash sort of fuck, he fucks up the phrase famously, like that it sort of like sets things in motion. So it would be wrong to say he actually says it because he says not that specifically. Uh, the other thing I would have accepted, which is much pickier, so I wasn't actually expecting anyone to do it, but in Army of Darkness, it's Klaatu Verata Necto instead of Barada. It's a weird like alternate usage that is like, it's like, well, this is so picky and so similar sounding. I don't actually expect anyone to be able to get this, but if any of you had pulled it I out of your pocket- I knew there was other was... gobbledygook in there. <laughs> It didn't sound quite right. <laughs> Another place where this phrase shows up is in Star Wars uh, uh, in a very roundabout way, which uh, is that Jabba the Hutt employs a pair of aliens called Nyctos who are named Klaatu and Barada. So a little Easter wow. egg snuck in there uh, for a little extra wow. Klaatu Barada Nikto in there. Well, this will bring us to our second shiny question of the game. Ooh, 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 we'll call this one not so super. In this game, we're going to ask you to identify which of these six actors has not played a superhero in a superhero movie. Whoever can identify it first will get the point. Let's take a look at those actors. Which one of these has not played a superhero? Mm, man. Erica, you've buzzed in. Uh, um, actually, I'm gonna say Tom Cruise did not play a superhero. You are correct. Tom Cruise has Woo! not played a superhero in a superhero movie before. Uh, the rest of these, ha in some form or other, have. I'm wondering if, if, uh, if you can name any of these off the top of your head. So uh, I, was, I was certain of Hancock. Yes. Uh, the Shadow and the Phantom. Yes. yes. Um, Liam Neeson is somebody's, somebody's father. I, he's Zeus, who's like the superhero of ancient Greece at the very least. Uh, but, <laughs> and then Dolph Lundgren, I know, but I can't remember. Got it. I just knew, I knew Tom Cruise. I'm, I'm a little more familiar with the Tom Cruise ovure. Um, <laughs> as far as I could tell, he has not done a superhero. Yeah, well, then that's... I was like, Ethan Hunt. It's yeah. like he's defied death so many times. <laughs> at a Dude, that's got to be a superhero at some point, yeah. right? Uh, Liam Neeson uh, played Darkman um, in Sam Raimi's Darkman. And also... I do know. Right, right, um, right. Dolph Lundgren uh, played uh, the Punisher in uh, like a 
of a maybe 90s version of the Punisher or something. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, so some some older ones here, some some lesser known wow. ones, but a pretty good spread there. You identified it pretty quick. That point will go to Erica for identifying Tom Cruise as our super powerless hero uh, up here. All right, four for Kelly, two for Erica, one for Malika. Here's our next statement. Aqua Teen Hunger Force could be considered a spin-off series since the characters Frylock, Meatwad, and Master Shake were first developed for an episode of Space Ghost Coast to Coast called Baffler Meal. Aqua Teen Hunger Force itself later spun off the series Aqua Unit Patrol Squad 1 and Soul Quest Overdrive. Uh, Kelly's buzzed in. Um, actually, it's not called the Baffler Meal. Uh, that is what that episode is called. That's, that's not what we're looking for. Darn. Darn. Uh, Erica. Um, actually, Soul Quest Overdrive was not an Aqua Teen Hunger Force uh, show. It was a spinoff. It was uh, that was uh, an Aqua Teen Hunger Force spinoff. Soul Quest Overdrive. Malika, do you have a guess or? Um, actually, I don't remember anything about the development of the show, but I like making character voices. <laughs> wow, yes. <laughs> Erica, you were close. You just picked the wrong show. Uh, Aqua Unit Patrol uh, Squad 1 is not actually a spinoff. It wasn't uh, a spinoff. Wait, shit, it wasn't a spinoff. It was like, that's what they turned the show into. They just correct, renamed yeah. it. Yes, ah, that is correct. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, no, they absolutely had that one. No! Oh, yes. I mean, that's so picky. It's so picky. Later seasons, oh, uh, uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force just started that renaming the show for no reason. They had like yeah. three alternate names for the show. It was just like, yeah, this is what we're calling it now. Um, they also went by Aqua TV Show Show, Aqua Hunger Force Forever, and Aqua Something You Know Whatever. Oh, uh, they man. just switched it up. So not actually a spinoff, just uh, just changing things up for just no damn reason. It. Well, uh, Erica, you knew it, but I'm sorry, I can't give you a point for that. We're going to move right along to our next statement here. The Yu-Gi-Oh! card game is based on the fictional card game Duel Monsters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga. Some cards depict monstrous creatures like the Winged Dragon Ra and Obelisk the Tormentor, but it also features much sillier cards like Doom Donuts, World Carrot Weight Champion, and Burger Lords. Malika has buzzed in. Um, actually, all the characters in the cards are super epic, like Blue Eyes White Dragon. <laughs> and there are no silly characters in my Yu-Gi-Oh game. No, there are definitely some silly characters in there. <laughs> I, I don't think this is even subjective. I think these are objectively silly characters, some of them. Uh, Erica. Um, actually, yeah, they're super silly, but I think Burger Lords is something else that is not Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm going to give you the point there, Erica. You're correct. There is a card that is called uh, Hungry Burger. Burger Lords oh. is a, a chain of vegan burger restaurants in Los Angeles. <laughs> that was <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so Burger Lords, you, not I a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> so is there really a carrot weight champion Yu-Gi-Oh card? Really there really wow. is a World Carrot Weight Champion Yu-Gi-Oh card, which I believe it's like an anthropomorphic carrot who's also a boxer, which I think we'll all agree is quite silly. <gasps> <laughs> he's multiple carrots? Well, he's the World Carrot Weight Champion. <laughs> uh, all right, well, we, we are on to our second to last question here, which is also <gasps> the last oh shiny God. question of the game. Last shiny question. Uh, this is a game we're calling, they say the best swords have names. I'm gonna give you the name of a sword and ask you to identify what it's from. Whoever can get the most will get the point. Let's take a look at that first sword name. Vermin Fate. Where is Vermin Fate from? Uh, Kelly's buzzed in. Um, actually, Redwall? That is from Redwall, that is correct. Oh. Uh, Kelly will nab that one. I'll reset the buzzers. And our next sword, let's take a look at that. Long Claw. Erica's buzzed in. Um, actually, uh, Song of Ice and Fire. That is correct. Song of Ice and Fire. That is Longclaw. We're going fast with these. All right, let's take a look at our third sword. sword. Orcrist. Erica's buzzed in very quickly. Um, actually, that's the Hobbit. That is uh, the Goblin Cleaver. Uh, that I will accept a Hobbit or Lord of the Rings. That is all good. It there. was obtained in The Hobbit. It was obtained in The Hobbit. Uh, I just drove I... of the troll <laughs> that Bilbo tricked into turning into stone. Trap. You're right. Look, you're right. When you're right, you're right. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. <laughs> uh, that is two for Erica so far, one for Kelly. Let's take a look at our next sword. Our next sword. Johnny Corkscrew. <laughs> 
that really a sword? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I I can't lose points or go into the negative, can I? No, um, you actually, can't. That's from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> cool guess. No, it's not from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, actually, is from uh, Hook. Uh, you're close enough. I'm gonna count it. Actually, uh, what? this is from this is from Peter Pan. Uh, this, Stop! Uh, freaked out and said hook <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're close up with hook i'll count it because the same basic universe johnny corkscrew is sneeze uh sword which he calls because he stabs it in and then gives yeah. it a little twist oh johnny corkscrew kelly pulling that out of nowhere uh let's Here's take a look at our next sword next sword bigger on sword uh erica's buzzed in um actually legend of zelda that is correct. Three for Erica, two for Kelly. We've got one more sword left. Uh, let's take a look at this last one. Luck and Pluck. It's actually two swords. What is this from? Um, uh, Erica, you buzzed actually, in. Actually, uh, uh, Chronicles of Narnia. That's always my uh, go-to. Nope, nope, that's not correct. Sorry, sorry to say. Uh, any other guesses here? Uh, Kelly. Um, actually. And I'm only doing this because you said Chronicles of Narnia, and I was like, well, I don't know. Uh, 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 oh, shh. Am I forgetting the name? Uh, Golden Comp uh, His Dark Materials. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, no, that's not what this is from. Philip no, no. Pullman's. Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, His Dark yeah. Materials. No, 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 no. no. What Man. is this? What are these swords? I give up. We'll call it then. Uh, no one gets that one. That uh, That's from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, that's ah, from... I'm just watching it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, no points for that one. That means, Kelly, you got two. Erica, you got three. Uh, that means, Erica, you're gonna get the point for this shiny for getting those swords. Getting those Hooray. swords. Hooray! Good job. Hooray. Actually, that was my first job, was selling fantasy swords. Like, oh, really? Get out of here! Job. Yeah, I did the whole child actor thing, and then I did violin, and then I was always at the mall's sword shop, King of Knives, like, <laughs> ogling the Lord of the Rings swords, and they were like, do you want a job? Because I'd like, you know, like you're always here, just staring who, at the swords. Here, staring <laughs> at the swords, cornering our customers and telling them stuff about Lord of the Rings. Like, do you want a job? And I was like, I'm not legally old enough to even be touching these. Yes, <laughs> that, that, that is was incredible. Real fun. The people watching was, yeah, I bet. incredible. I love that your mall had a whole had a whole store devoted to selling not the swords. Swords, like nice ones too. Wow. And then knives, both like kitchen and really nice, like folding knives or wow. pocket knives, K-bars, yeah. It was great, I learned a ton. Clearly, I mean, it helps you out here to get this shining yeah. point. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that will bring us to our last question of the game here. What is our oh, point Jesus. spread as we go into the last question? Erica and Kelly with four, oh, Malika with one. So no. far behind. That's okay. Uh, it's about the friends we made along the way. Yay. Yeah. yeah. The, that's the real points here. Um, mm -hmm. Here it is. Our last question, as always, uh, concerns real life skills. <laughs> Tipping practices for wait staff vary widely around the world. In some places like the US and Canada, a 15 to 20% tip is customary, in part because the tipped minimum wage in the US is still only $3 per hour. In other places like Denmark and Japan, tips are not expected. Uh, Kelly's buzzed in. It's lower than three. It's, isn't it like 250 or? Actually, I'm actually. <laughs> I will, um, I, I, actually. I, I, I will count that tail slate. Uh, the, the, I'll, I'll, you, you stuck that I'm actually in before I said anything else. And you are correct. Uh, the tipped minimum wage in the US is $2.13. It is lower than $3 that an hour. That is some jacked up shit. That is some jacked up shit. Uh, that is fucking crazy. If you hear that and still think, you, you know, are still stingy with the tips, get yourself an order. Tip your weight staff because they're only making $2.13 an hour. But with that fucked up uh, point, Kelly will get that point. Five for Kelly, four for Erica, one for Whoa. Malika, which means Kelly is our winner this episode. Wow. Huge moment for me. Thank you so much, everybody. It was an honor to compete beside you. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever won an um, actually. I think I lucked out with some guesses. You ran faster than your friends. Congratulations. Thank there you, you go. so much. <laughs> well, uh, thank you all for playing with me on this episode, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Um Actually.